If you want to render your video in Premiere Pro, it's pretty easy. But just to clarify, rendering and exporting are two different things in Premiere Pro, even though the terms can get used interchangeably sometimes. In this video, we're going over how to render your video footage for better playback in Premiere Pro. But if you wanted to know how to export your footage, I've actually got a different video all about that at the link in the description below. If you want to render your video, all you have to do is make sure that your timeline is highlighted and either hit the enter key, which will render all of the red sections on your timeline, or you can go up to sequence, and then you'll have multiple options for rendering, and I'll go over what each of them do. But first, like I said, if you just hit the enter key, it'll choose the option for render effects in to out. What that means essentially is that it'll look between the areas where you've set your in and out markers, and if you don't have any, it'll just look at your entire timeline, and within those boundaries, it'll only render sections that have a high likelihood to fail smooth playback noted by a red line above these sections. This is usually because you've added an effect that takes a lot of resources. For example, if I add a warp stabilizer effect to this clip, it'll turn from yellow to red, meaning this clip will now be included in the render if we press enter. Yellow sections mean that there's no preview files associated to make playback easier, and that the source codec doesn't match your preview render codec. But this doesn't mean it won't play back smoothly, there's just a chance that it won't. Green simply means that it has rendered preview files ready to go or that the source and preview codecs match, so there's no need to render. But again, this will change if I add an effect to it. So if you only wanna render red sections for playback, then hit enter or go up to sequence and choose render effects into out. But if you're experiencing problems with yellow sections as well, or if you just wanna be safe and ensure smooth playback everywhere, you can select render into out instead, which will include everything. There's also render selection, which is grayed out currently, but if we select a section of footage, we can now render only what's highlighted on our timeline. This is really great, for example, if you just wanted to see how a particular transition or small section of your timeline looks, but you don't want to render out the entire video project. Likewise, if you plan to make a bunch of changes over and over again, but are having trouble seeing what you're actually doing, set your in and out point to only this small section here, and then every time you make a change, you can render in to out, without having to select the section over and over again. Then finally, it's less common, but if you're having problems with your audio, you can select render audio. And if you're having any problems with any section of your video, for example, if you've rendered everything out, but you're getting weird playback abnormalities or it's glitchy or something doesn't look quite right, there's a chance every so often that an error has occurred while rendering and you have the option to delete all render files or just those between your in to out markers. This won't delete your video footage, it'll just delete the preview files. And once you do, you can redo the rendering, getting rid of any possible problems that occurred. But if you guys found this video helpful, subscribe and check out this video for even more Premiere Pro tips.